I'm James McCormack, and I'm a professor with the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Well, I'm not really sure. And, that, and that's what you and I have talked about. Because is it show more spine to ask more questions? Is it, is, it, is, it the, is it the patient who's supposed to show more spine? Is it the healthcare provider to show more spine? Is it the administrator or is it the political person who's supposed to show more spine? I, if it's more, showing more spine about getting more information in a way that people understand, absolutely. But it depends where, who is supposed to show more spine. It is very difficult for a patient to get that information because they're not they often don't have the skills or the techniques to be able to do it. So I don't know what more spine they would show to say, I'm not sure what they would say. Now, a healthcare provider might be able to say, yeah, I need to delve into the information and, and I need to be able to be more, uh, have more spine from the concept of, I actually know what I'm doing, maybe. If that's what it means, then I love it. Using words like high risk or low risk, they really don't convey information in a way that anyone can make a, a decision about anything. So what we're trying to do is, is say, you know, to stop doing, stop doing widening of disease definitions and just provide reasonable risk estimates for, to patients. And it can be done for almost, almost all the medical conditions that we talk about where there is overdiagnosis, whether it be blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose, or bone density. We can make ballpark uh, risk assessments about bad things happening with the tools that we have now. They're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but boy, we can, we can do it a lot better than creating you know, fear associated with a term like blood pressure or elevated uh, cholesterol and sort of stuff. We can get away from those terms and just provide information on risk. I think that actually, you get rid of the problem of, of overdiagnosis and, and sort of disease mongering or widening of disease uh, labeling. You don't go and say you have low bone density. You don't go say you have high blood pressure. Because the connotations, unfortunately, as, as our medical society has created, those are negative terms. You're saying you've got a problem. Well, it's only a problem if you, would, if the, if you can give a treatment for which they would want to take. And then if they, don't, if they wouldn't take it anyway, then why would you tell them about their risk? It's very tricky. If, if a person's chance of having a fracture in the next 10 years is, let's say, 10%, and if the treatment can reduce that down to 8%, that is kind of what the trials show, maybe 7%, if the person would like to take treatment, then why would I care? And if they don't, why would I care? You know, because it's, it's really, why, why not just let them make a decision? And if we do that, we, I think, eliminate all of the overdiagnosis problem and all of the underdiagnosis problem, because now there is no over or under diagnosis. It's, it's based on that patient's uh, preferences and values.